as well we're going to celebrate the resurrection of jesus this morning and say father i thank you because you rose for my sake you defeated the devil for my sake you disgraced the devil for my sake lift up your voice you gave your life that i may live well you sacrifice your life that it will be well for me lift up your voice i thank you thank you for what you did for your shed blood for the stripes that you received for my sake thank you for the 39 lashes that you received to make me free from sickness from disease lord i celebrate you awesome god the ever faithful God, the ever dependable God. Blessed be your holy name for what you did on my behalf. I am grateful to you. Thank you for resurrection. Thank you for resurrecting for my sake. Glory be to your awesome name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I see the smell, the perfume of promotion. hear me this month god will break protocols to change your level if you are saying amen say better amen one proof of resurrection is that loss can be aborted god suspended the law of gravity to make sure that jesus arose on your behalf whatever needs to be suspended Whatever law needs to be broken for your story to change, it will happen this morning. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So shall it be. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, shall be the order of the day in my life. Congratulations. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seats. Tell somebody happy Easter. happy Easter. Tell another person happy Easter. Happy Easter. There is enough rice and beans. Hallelujah. You never chop rice before. Tell me if you have not eaten rice before. Praise God. In the first service, we looked at the significance and revelation of resurrection. And in this second service, we are continuing that same series as we'll be looking at five of them as we get ready to pray. I'd like us to begin by understanding this fact that resurrection is a proof of our being here. Scripture said, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, we would have been all men most miserable. To have been the deadless religion. But the fact that he arose is a proof that you are alive. The fact that he arose is a proof that you are in the right place. I'm beginning from today, watch out, you have entered into a new era of proofs. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now God will be proving to you the realities of resurrection. Many thought that um, it was uh, something of the olden days. The reason for the proofs is to let us know that the resurrection power of God is still at work. It's still at work. And it will work for somebody today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now we are taking a look at the significance and revelations that comes along with the resurrection of Jesus. Number one, there is no victory without conflict. 
there is no victory without contention. The conflict at the cross is the victory of Christ. It was a great conflict. Conflict loaded with mockery. So all the mockery you are going through now is a prelude to your victory. It's a preparatory phrase to your change of level. Foolish man. If you say you are the son of God, why are you here now? Oh yeah, drink, drink, so that you have strength to die. They were making a mockery, not knowing that it was a prelude to his victory. He was going through the preparatory phase. Scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You hear me? You are closer to your victory. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He endured the mockery. <laughs> See, person who called himself Messiah. You say you are Messiah, you can't save yourself. Who told you you are Messiah? I better bring that chuku chuku put on his head. Make him suffer more and say be Messiah. Mercy, I go take him out. <laughs> For we know all things work together for good to them that love God. Hear this again. There is no breakthrough without battles. The battle of Jesus at the cross was the last phase before resurrection. No wonder Great victories, they are products of great conflicts. If you are going through contention now, from every angle, know that your victory will be a big one. Your breakthrough will be a big one. Great victories, they are products of great contentions. So if you are a stranger to conflict, you will also be a stranger to victory. I don't know what I deserve. They are just attacking me. They are just attacking me. Eh? I'll, I'll stop coming to this church. You don't belong here. I enter choir, they will be attacking me. I go to CCU, they will be attacking me. If you are a stranger to conflict, you will be a stranger to victory. So don't be afraid of conflict. Don't be afraid of battle. The heavier the conflict, the heavier your victory. The heavier your mockery, the heavier your testimony. It is in scripture. They will mock, but God will make. They mocked him. They laughed him to scorn. Even in church, you can be passing by. They say, see him. See him. See him. See him. See him. Is it amazing that majority of the mockery you get, they come from people that you know? Yeah. Ah, the people that you know, people that are close to you. They are the ones that steers up your mockery, your shame. But I have good news for you. They are facilitating your breakthrough. Yeah. They are what we call divine catalysts. Now, in elementary biology, they told us that a catalyst is what? A substance that fasting or hastening the rate of what? A reaction. So, when mockery increases, they are increasing the pace of God's performance in your life. So, when they began to do all manner they didn't know that Jesus was already close. He was already close. He was already close. So he was just enduring it. I better continue, continue. I'm closer to where I'm going. The enemy that is mocking you is, doesn't know that he's helping you to arrive at where God has in mind for you. 
So when conflict comes, when mockery comes, celebrate. Celebrate. Oh, I remember that sister that went for evangelism. She went around, around distributing flyers. I said, if the Jesus you are talking about is real, why haven't you married? She said, Father, I thank you because the mockery is unto you. Now she got someone saved, brought someone to church. That one got married. After that one got married, she got married. Where we are the mockers. Should I tell you something? Psalm 1 to 6. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, he said, We were like them that dream. He said, Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. They said, The hidden among themselves, The Lord have done great things. Hear me and hear me well. Any battle you are going through now, any conflict you are going through now, will announce your testimony. It will announce your breakthrough. It will announce your change of story. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now let me bring this here. If God has shown Joseph that they were going to throw him into the pit, that they were going to sell him as a slave, that he was going to encounter Potiphar's wife, he will have run away. Do you agree with me? God only showed him that uh, see where we keep you. He didn't show him where he will pass. If he, has, if he had made the mistake of showing him, see your brothers, they go tear your cloth. In fact, they go kill you. They will drop you inside the pit. From there, they will sell you as a slave. Say this dream, God forbid, now Satan. But God never showed him that side. He only showed him, see, you are going to wear your crown. Your brothers will come and do ballet for you. He said, Papa, you follow, you follow, you follow. You follow bar for me. <laughs> Those were the only things he was seeing. But when his trouble started, hear me? Troubles are preparatory to victories. Oh, when trouble comes, just know that your victory is around. Oh. When mockery comes, know that breakthrough is about to come. Oh. God never showed Joseph. If he had shown Joseph, I want to let you know that that same day, he will never open his mouth to talk, I dream. I see dream. He will never say it again. But he held on to the dream. The dream stamped on his heart. And he was following it. He was seeing it live. It was real to him. No wonder. Finally, when the dream manifested, he said, I'm that Joseph. You meant it for evil. But God turned it around for my deliverance. Whatever contention the enemy is organizing for you now, God will turn it for your deliverance. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So don't be afraid of conflicts. Don't be afraid of battles. He said, when you pass through the fire, I will be with you. When you pass through the water, it will not drown you. I will be with you. That's what I, I, I will be with you. I will be with you. I will allow you to go through that phase and bring you to the place where I have prepared for you. Should I tell you something now? Whatever you are going through now is for a purpose. Because the moment God brings you out, he will use you to cancel people that will go through those same things. So if you don't go through it now, who will you cancel? Who will you tell? Calm down. God brought me out. He will bring you out. Calm down. God, God saw me through. He will see you through. If you don't go... That's why people that dodge process, they don't end up becoming products. If you dodge a process, you will never become a product. If Jesus dodged the cross, he will also miss the crown. So every crown, there is a cross. So you dodge the, the cross, you miss the crown. Wearing crown is good. 
But carrying the cross is what determines it. So if you, if you are a stranger to trouble, to problem, to challenge, to mockery, you also be a stranger to victory. You will not know the value of what you are having in your hand. I might say something to somebody. But Jesus had to go through the conflict because he was sure of the victory. Number two. Great outcomes, they are products of strong betrayers. Great outcomes in life, they are products of strong betrayers. Great destinies, they are the focus of great betrayers. What did Jesus do to Judas? I called you to come and follow me. I put myself into trouble. When God blessed Abraham, he called his brother, Lord, come and follow me. The blessing is much. I cannot finish it. The lot he carried became the lot of his problem. What did Jesus do by calling Judas? Why the betrayer? Why becoming the channel that the enemy will use? But hear me, like I said in the first service, it is for a purpose. If your outcome in life will be great, I want you to hear this. Expect strong betrayers expect great conspiracies to be afraid of betrayers and conspiracies is to sacrifice your destiny into nothingness and much more importantly i want to let you know the betrayers will come from people that are closer to you the enemy cannot reach you if he if he cannot have access to someone that is close to you check it most attacks that takes place in the lives of people, it is always through people that are closer to them. What did Jesus did by calling Judas? Did he do wrong? Or he didn't hear well? He had well. But Judas was available for the devil to use. And being available for the devil to use, he felt that this mission I will abort it. I will make sure this mission doesn't come to pass. Judas represented a stopper to the mission of resurrection. He represented a stopper. Let's puncture this plan. It cannot work. Give me money. I will make sure I give you plan. Thank God for the WhatsApp age we are in now. You can be in church and somebody is WhatsApping you. In this same church, I'm saying the truth. Oh, he's sitting on the third row. Go, go check, go check. Tell that usher, go, make the usher stand where in the you go see him. Judas was the informant. It was the monitoring spirit telling them he's going to pray, he's passing through Book and City. He has closed the door. He has closed the door. Wait. If he opens the door, we'll let you know. Okay, he has arrived. He has arrived. The driver just told me that, that he has arrived. Judas was the monitoring spirit. He felt that by that conspiracy, he was going to abort the divine plan. But scripture said, take cancer together. It shall come to naught. He said, devise a strategy. It shall not stand, for God is with us. Hear me? I want you to hear this. Never you feel offended or feel bad 
when someone close to you is being used of the devil to walk against you. He's not walking against you, he's walking against himself. But rather, he's helping to fast forward your own plan. Now, when it was time for crowning, was Judas there? No, answer me. When it was time for crowning of the others, was Judas there? He missed his place. So anyone walking against you now will automatically miss their place. Yeah. If you are saying amen, be sure of what you are saying. Yeah. They will miss their place. Amen. I say they will miss their place. Yeah. But what they thought they will be able to abort, God will confirm. Yeah. Now did Jesus complete his mission? Yeah. He completed his mission. No wonder. I re-echo this scripture again. For we know all things work it together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Tell your neighbor, relax. relax. Tell your neighbor again, relax. relax. If they did it to Jesus, get ready, they will do it to you. They will do it to you. Don't feel offended. Just know that something good is about to happen to you. But their own, their own will stop. Their own will stop. Great betrayers, they are preludes to great victories. Amazingly, the conspiracy was thick that they got the endorsement of Pilate. Do you know who Pilate was? Do you know who Pilate was? <laughs> Pilate was the voice. Once he sanctioned, consider it done. They got the endorsement of Pilate. Pilate never wanted to. Because he knew that it was a wrong thing. But to satisfy the conscience and the desires of these people, he had to give the approval. I don't know who is giving the approval to work against you. But I want to guarantee you, their plan will still fail. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now hear me. There is no counsel to undo you can upturn God's plan for you. No, no one. Why? My counsel shall stand. There was one evening I was meditating on this scripture for good four hours. I saw what I have never seen in my life. My counsel shall stand. And I will do all of my good pleasure. So no matter what man's counsel may look like around in your life. The Lord of hosts has proposed. And who shall disannul? His hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? Now like I said in the first service. Resurrection morning was a programming. No matter the conspiracy. There is a program. There is an agenda. Pre-planned for your life. To them that he did predestine he called. To them he called, he justified. To them he justified, he also glorified. So there is a programming for your life. Which no witch or wizard can obtain, can abort. God will allow them to do whatever they want to do. But at the end, God will confirm his word in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That's what I want to say to you this morning. Never you surrender any aspect of God's plan of your life. To mockery, to conspiracy. But that has been the order in some people's life. The moment people begin to talk against them, they withdraw. The moment people begin to gang up against them, they change their mind. Why? Changing your mind means you don't value what you are pursuing. Changing your mind means what they are saying is true. Mockers will always do their job. Allow them to finish their assignments. Betrayers didn't start with you. It will not end with you. Is it today that they started betrayer? People you trusted the most, they are the ones that Satan will use to betray you. So relax. It didn't start today. No matter the betrayer going on, it cannot puncture the plan of God for your life. For I alone know the thoughts that I think towards you, 
thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. You will reach there. Yeah. I said you will get there. Yeah. So mockery, they are normal. Betrayers, they are normal. Great victories, they are preceded by great conflicts. If your victory is small, they will talk about you small. To say to you this morning, they cannot stop God's plan for your life. Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. If they couldn't stop the plan of God concerning Jesus to the cross and resurrection, they cannot stop the plan of God for your life. Yeah. Number three. The promise of God must be fulfilled irrespective of any circumstance. If God has given you a promise, hold on to it. Psalm 89 and verse 34. My, co my covenant will I not break. Nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. My covenant will I not what? Break. Nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. So shall my word be that goeth forth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. By myself have I sworn, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. amen. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus is the confirmation of God's word. So any word that is hanging on your head now, on your life, any word you have believed, hear me? Get ready to see them come to pass. Yeah. Time can't stop God. God lives in a, he dwells in eternity, not in time. Eternity is superior to time. No wonder scripture say a, a day in the sight of the Lord is more than a thousand years. A day. So a day is equated to a thousand years. God dwells in eternity, not regulated by time. He only gave time to men to exist on the earth. So God is not tied to time. That's why man can tell you your time has passed. God will say, for where? In Ghana, a woman of 82 years delivered a baby. What did say that I use big pass and not too much? Two of us. How many years? Eight years. The difference not too far. Am I correct? Now, somebody, a sister in local church, delivered her first baby at 55. Delivered her second baby at 58. We are monopause day. No, answer me. We are monopause day. So the mono was suspended. And God's counsel came to pass. I want to let you know, no matter the circumstances around you, God's counsel concerning you must come to pass. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Now, like we had in the first service, they did everything possible to abort resurrection. Just like men are doing now. Out of stupidity, over my dead body, will she marry? Over my dead body, will she carry the baby? Who give you body? Who give you body? Now look at. 
I still can't understand it. I still can't understand it. With the heavy boulders they use in covering the tomb. Do you know what a tomb is? Who has seen a tomb before? Eh? Television, no official, huh? They used heavy boulders to cover the tomb. But amazingly, on resurrection morning, scripture said, one, there was an earthquake. Am I correct? Now, if earthquake take place, wouldn't there be a sound? No. We are doing normal analysis now. Wouldn't there be a sound? Number two, Angels came with their finger and we are pushing out the boulders. If your house is close by, wouldn't there be a, a sound? But scripture said the soldiers were asleep. I don't know which volume 20 they took. But I want to say to you, at your set time, God will give your enemy a sleep. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So when they are rejoicing that they have finished you, they have finished themselves. I said they have finished themselves. Amen. Pastor, I still can't understand that kind of sleep. It looks like the sleep of death. Sleep until this thing finish. Until the breakthrough is completed. Hear me and hear me well. As long as the God of Oyedeko liveth that rose Jesus from the dead, I say to you, your enemies will be asleep and your breakthrough will be established. Your breakthrough will be confirmed. I remember the testimony just now. A wicked mother-in-law told the daughter-in-law that uh, let me see how you come and get pregnant in this place. Should I announce to you this morning your enemy is not omnipresence. They are omnilocated. They are Omini Akwanga. <laughs> they are Omini Kefi. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are not Omini presence. Now, she vowed that she will never be pregnant. When God stepped in, as God is stepping in for you, she became pregnant. Dimiro no see again. She became pregnant, delivered the baby, they did covenant naming. After they did covenant naming, she needed enough rest. It's not this one that uh, we, you deliver today now, four weeks now, we are doing child dedication. She gave three months gap. On the third month, Mama, we are going for dedication now. <laughs> you don't burn! When? That's what I'm telling you. Your any, the winch that is looking for you, they are Omini Nasarawa. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They are not Omini presence. You now call the husband. How come your wife is pregnant? You didn't tell me. The son said, We didn't want to let you know. Period. But nevertheless, in case you feel like coming, we are going for dedication on Sunday. And they were talking to her on Friday. She was boiling like pepper. Your enemy will boil like pepper. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. What God did was to let them know that they can't see everything. Amen. They can't know everything. 
I said they can't see everything. Whatever mirror they are using to monitor you, let resurrection power scatter their mirror. Let resurrection power scatter their talisman. They couldn't see it. God's counsel went through the process. Pregnancy grew. Nine months, the baby delivered. Naming was done. Dedication entered. She couldn't still see. She didn't see everything. She not see again. I want to let you know there is no situation you find yourself now that God's counsel will not overrule. I stand on resurrection power this morning. God will overrule every counsel of the enemy. God will over God is overruling over judgment of the wicked. Whatever look like a manipulation taking place over your life now, they are suspended. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now let me conclude with this. Those soldiers that we are assigned to guard the body so that nobody will come and carry it and they will not come and be lying to them that he has resurrected. After resurrection took place, after resurrection took place, if you are among those soldiers, you may hang yourself because you have failed your assignment. Am I correct, sir? You, you may hang yourself. They began to weep. <laughs> Peter said, no cry. Did Jesus, they sent you to come and check. He has arisen. See the tomb. See the tomb. See the cloth. He has appeared to us. Hear me and hear me where. I want to say to you, the people on assignment to monitor you, God will disgrace them. God will disappoint them. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Amen. They are keeping vigil to make sure that God's plan never come to pass in your life. Hear me and hear me well. That cancel will come to pass. That cancel will be fulfilled. That cancel will be established. So shall it be. Number three. Number four. There are too many lessons to be learned. The people... He came to die for. They were fighting their salvation. By fighting his mission, they were also fighting their salvation. Those to whom you are sent to help, to bless, to assist, to be part of their lifting, they will constitute the worst resistance against you. The same people Jesus came to bless. At first they were shouting, Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Later, the song changed. Crucify him! Finish him! Crucify him! Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Let that change your mouth. Crucify him. Oh. My name no day. Crucify him. That's why if you follow the behavior of men, you will not fulfill your divine destiny. If you follow men's attitude, your vision will remain inactive. Like we said in the first service, if they knew that there was going to be resurrection, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. The people Moses was sent to, to bring out from Egypt, they almost made him miss his crown. They provoked him to sore anger. 
In fact, Moses' crossing was an intervention. It was an intervention. He saw the promised land, but did he enter? If Jesus had taken to heart the things that we had done against him, he would have missed his mission and also missed his crown. I want to say to you now, no matter what is happening around you, ignore. Tell your neighbor, ignore it. It is normal for people to misbehave. It is normal for people to fight your assignment, to work against you. Ignore it. If you lay it to heart, Satan will give you another focus. That was what the enemy organized to do for Jesus to get him distracted. Because the moment you lose your focus, you'll be pursuing another thing. You'll be fighting what you're not supposed to fight. Wisdom demands that you reserve your energy for the right battle. Not to dissipate your energy for useless battles. The people he came to save, they were part of the people abusing him. If you now begin to go, Amos, come. Come and tell me, who are the people abusing me in this church? So that I will know them as I climb the altar. I hope you know I failed. I failed. No matter how a man is anointed, there are people that will never like him. There are people that will never believe in him. There are people that will make sure they will work against him. It is very normal. If people are fighting Papa in Kenan land, who is this small boy in Lafia? Jesus had 12. He had one called Thomas. Unbelieving believer. He had another one called Judas. The anointed betrayer. Two over 12. So if there are 100 here, I pass. Didn't I pass? It's very normal. So going about looking for who is not speaking well for you, you are a fool. Even Jesus said, what is you when men speak well of you? Don't go looking for who will speak well of you. It's a waste of time. Focus on your mission so that you can arrive. No wonder, he said, for the joy. Paul said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shape. He, he was... Permit me to tell, let you know this. He was hearing all what they were saying. He said, This is not what I, what I came for. I need to get to the cross. The cross is my target. If I settle down now and begin to fight all this small, small fight now, I may miss the cross. I need to get to the cross. You need to go, I need to get to the cross. So, all this little, little fight, please, they should be going on while I keep my focus. Tell your neighbor, keep your focus. Keep your focus. your assignment till you get through. Notice if the enemy tries a method it does not work it will ferment another method. It will look for another, another pattern. But please keep your focus. Jesus, his eyes were set on the cross. It was timed. Getting to the cross was timed. So he did not allow any destruction. Even when Peter brought out his sword and wiped out somebody's ear, he said, Peter, put back the sword. This is not the time. If we begin this now, this are Hendricks will win over us. Put back your sword. He collect the man. Yeah, he stamp him back. Toy! The thing come back. Hear me and hear me well. It's not time to look for who is talking about you. Don't go and carry unnecessary fights. Peter wanted them to fight. Jesus, now because of you. If not, I will cut off somebody's head. Say, put your sword back. Tell your neighbor, put your sword back. Tell your neighbor, put your sword back. It's not time to fight. No wonder scripture say, wisdom is better 
than weapons of war. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. If you allow the sayings of the enemy, you miss where you are going. But you will not miss it. And number five. God is a manufacturer of surprises. God is a manufacturer of surprises. The proof of resurrection is that God will surprise your enemies. Somebody didn't say amen. amen. I said God will surprise your enemies. Amen. I say again God will surprise your enemies. Amen. It took the enemy on away. Now, permit me to say again because of my privileged understanding of military setup and security. I'm sure those guards that we are assigned to watch over the tomb, they were holding walking talking. How far? Any sign? No show yet. They were call. maybe they were calling every 15 minutes of, or every 30 minutes or every one hour. But it got to a point they sleep, eh? They, they sleep like mumu. They oversleep. To the point that earthquake took place. They know here. Angels came and rolled away the boulders. They still didn't hear. I want to say to you, God will surprise your enemies. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Do you know the biggest shocker of life? When an enemy has pre-planned to stop you on a particular front, I hope you know God can come through the back door. He can come through the window. Now let me show you something. When God wants to surprise you and surprise your enemy, he bypass people they expect to use to bless you. Let me give you an example now. Let's say now, there are some people in this church that have some change. Say with me, some change. Okay. Some people now go and say, you know, we know you people in this church. People shouldn't bless pastor. Don't bless pastor. I'm just advising you, don't get closer to him. Don't bless pastor. We know him all. But God said, my ways are not your ways. Neither I my thoughts your thoughts. Now, if the mumu, repeat after me, if the mumu, if the mumu. now listening to the council, if, it, if the mumu now listening to the council, I will now bless him. Let me see how he will feed in Lafia. Scripture said, I am the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. In Deuteronomy, he said, when one door closed, so if they are five or six or seven, when one door closed, God opens seven. So seven times seven. So God will open 79 new doors that your enemies know nothing about. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. What I'm saying now has happened, so I can say it anyway. I'm not afraid. It has happened before. It will still happen again. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I was in a particular place. Someone thought he was working against me. I, I, di I didn't even know. It was after the whole event that I got to know. So, the mumu later came back to confess. I said, there's no need. There's no need. I've been blessed before you now. So, they said, God warned me so that I will not die. Should I tell you something? God will surprise your enemies. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. 
not knowing that when that was taking place, God was shifting me to another realm. Let me tell you the realm. Where people receive instruction in dreams to come and bless me. That's the realm I like. The realm that does not require man's dialogue or man's approval. That's a good realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So it was coming in torrents. It never ceased. It has still never ceased till now. It was coming in torrents. It was coming in torrents. So people you thought or expected or that must have been coerced, God bypassed them. I want to let you know, God will bypass your enemies and bless you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So they ganged up to make sure they made sure that every human method or protocol that will enhance resurrection will fail. That was why God used a method that was not normal, earthquake. And later, angels. You can only sense the presence of angels. You can't see them. Except you are a spirit man. I might say something to somebody. So when the angels came, they cleared the way. And lastly, God broke the law of gravity. When the law of gravity was broken, there was no siren or escort. Angels just came and took him and he ascended. That's why we are going to rise up and pray. O oh God of resurrection, break protocols for my change of story. Rise up to your feet. I make bold to say this morning, 24 hours from now, someone here will enter into divine surprise. The door the enemy thought he has closed, God is opening a strange door to confirm your blessing. You are going to lift up your voice and cry out from the depth of your heart. Lord, the same way you showed up on resurrection morning, let your resurrection power break protocols for my change of story. Lift up your voice and turn that into your prayer. That area you have been mocked, that area the enemy have told you, your story will not change, that you will not break through. I want you to open your mouth, lift up your voice. Oh God, the same way you showed up on resurrection morning, the same way you showed up on resurrection morning. The same way you showed up on resurrection morning. Break protocols. Give me a divine surprise. Give me a surprise testimony. A testimony of divine surprise. Break protocols by resurrection power. Break protocols for my change of story. Waymaker, break protocols by resurrection power. Change my story. Intervene in my matter. Intervene concerning my job. Intervene concerning my family. Melandoro Shikete Liara. Lift up your voice and cry out. Resurrection is real. The power of God is real. Oh God. By resurrection power. Break protocols. Change my story. By resurrection power. Give me a divine surprise. Give me a divine surprise. A surprise of testimony. A surprise of breakthrough. A surprise of open door. A surprise of lifting. A surprise of breakthrough. Lisa Jikotepo. Rihando Berish. 
Jesusi Kataria, Rekoterianda, Laboro Shikoteko, Embradi Ezona Telata, by resurrection power, break protocols. Give me a divine surprise. The same way you showed up at the resurrection of Jesus by resurrection power. Give me a surprise. Disappoints the plans of the enemy. Disappoints the counsel of the enemy. Disappoint the conspiracy of the wicked. It is written in your word. You frustrated the token of liars. And you make diviners to be mad. Lerando Bredish Etonia. Jaconare Jesus in Arata by resurrection power give me a divine surprise by resurrection power break protocols Leporeto suspend laws suspend laws suspend human decisions suspend human counsels by resurrection power Rentarosh and Peraneri and Zakletaria Lepebredosh Zekloperia Diata Break protocols, break protocols, break protocols by resurrection power. Break protocols. Lipode nush etora pos. Decre kikateria dosa. Lampereri alendo rodosha gadare. Give me a divine surprise. 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 Leboro shikotondi alere dos. Le ba 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 ba. Give me a divine surprise in line with your plans and purpose for my life. Give me a divine surprise. Le rando mondo rojike terianga la sonteriete. Give me a divine surprise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All eyes close. All heads bow. This is the best moment of life and destiny. This is the best moment of life and destiny. Accepting Jesus Christ is the best thing that can happen to any man. It's not an acceptance of mockery. It's an acceptance unto a glorious life. It's an acceptance that your life can be better than what it is now. Wherever you are, inside and outside. You want to welcome Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Congratulations. If you pray this prayer with me, come quickly right now. I want to pray with you. Because a change has taken place in you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Wherever you are, carry your bag and your Bible. And come quickly right now. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Put those hands together for Jesus. Come, come, come. God bless you. This is the best decision anybody can make. Put those hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. 